hello everybody welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be giving you a clip of the nursing times year of the nurse award for the nurse and midwife 2020 in this clip you're going to be seeing awards given to trusts and hospitals for their hard work recruitment experience for international nurses and their reception to international nurses and the way they treat their nurses and their midwives so as an international nurse i feel this is important for you so I get a lot of questions of which hospital you suggest I should go to, which is the best hospital. Well, from these awards, you can know firsthand the hospitals that have been nominated for their good works in recruitment and care of the nurse for this year, and the hospitals that have the best workforce. And you can hopefully apply and get a job with one of these trusts that have been tried and tested. Okay? So do see. This bird had a tear so eyes and so the faithful and the soul of the nurses were departed and the hand of God were departed. It is a rest in peace. Amen. If you've watched this year's Student Nursing Times Awards or the Nursing Times Awards, you may have seen that video before. I have to admit that I got quite emotional when I first watched it. I can't see you to gauge your reaction, but hopefully the message is clear about how much Nursing Times appreciates the efforts of the entire nursing workforce, wherever you are and whatever you do. Next, we have a personal message recorded for you by someone who has been a friend of Nursing Times for many years. I'm delighted to welcome our guest speaker of the afternoon, the Chief Executive of the International Council of Nurses, Howard Catton. Hello, my name is Howard Catton and I am the CEO of the International Council of Nurses. You know that this is the first ever designated World Health Organization Year of the Nurse and Midwife. Despite being 27 million strong, too often we have been forgotten and overlooked and this year was to really shine a spotlight on us as a profession and how important we are to global health. But then Covid hit. Clearly something none of us wanted but arguably it has demonstrated in an even more powerful and compelling way than having a year designated as year of the nurse and the midwife, just how central to global health our nursing profession is. Yes, people have seen the care, the compassion, but they've also seen the challenge, the courage and the leadership. We won't defeat coronavirus without you, but we won't deal with all of the other health challenges the world is facing. You really are nursing the world to health. But frankly, I have to say that the world has not done enough to support and prioritise you. The patron of nursing and midwifery globally, Her Royal Highness Princess Muna of Jordan, said to the World Health Assembly in just the last few days, applause without action is unacceptable. She is mirrored exactly what ICN has been saying and our calls for investment and action to support and protect you. 
Without you, our hospitals, our clinic, our health facilities are just empty buildings. The world is changing and this is an opportunity for nursing to take an even more prominent role, not just in the delivery of healthcare, but the leadership of our health systems. To all of you, please... So, to give me a helping hand and keep things running along smoothly, please welcome the voice of the balls, National Lottery and Strictly Come Dancing, Alan Dedico. Hello, Alan. Welcome to the Nursing Times Workforce Awards. Hello, Steve. And can I just say what a pleasure it is to be with you here today. Are you ready to reveal our winners? I am. Let's get started, shall we? Our first category is Best Recruitment Experience. This award recognises an organisation's strategic approach to the improvement of nurses and midwives' experience of the recruitment journey. Alan, who made the shortlist? The finalists are Medway NHS FT, NHS Professionals and Warrington and Holton Teaching Hospitals FT, and Warrington and Holton Teaching Hospitals FT. To announce our first winner, please welcome Dr June Brown, Interim Executive Nurse Director at NHS Grampian. I am absolutely delighted to be announcing this year's winner of the Best Recruitment Experience category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges were impressed by the winning entry which demonstrates clear aims, challenges and description of implementation. The judges felt the entire organisation showed extraordinary resilience and skills had missed the greatest challenge in healthcare history and were impressed by the winner's demonstration of utilising staff costs effectively but still providing the necessary patient care in an unpredictable future. And the winner is NHS Professionals and Warrington and Halton Teaching Hospitals. Thank you, June, and well done to NHS Professionals and Warrington and Holton Teaching Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. On hand to accept this award and to tell us more is Rachel Browning, Associate Chief Nurse and Team. Over to you, Rachel. We are delighted to receive this award on behalf of Warrington and Halton Hospitals and NHS Professionals. The COVID-19 pandemic response in Wave 1 created a significant challenge for us at the hospital. We work collaboratively with our colleagues at NHS Professionals to develop a rapid recruitment process which enabled us to recruit staff from the community as part of the national call to arms to come and work in the hospital. This undoubtedly made Wave 2, so thank you very much much and now to our second award the best well-being and staff engagement initiative sponsored by nhs employers here we recognize employers that have made a real improvement to their staff engagement activities and demonstrated a continued commitment to the mental and physical well-being of their staff this is so important to the current focus on retention and staff pressures over to you alan Thank you, Steve. Our finalists are Bart's Health NHS Trust and YLab, Birmingham City University, Dorset Healthcare University FT, Great Western Hospitals FT, Guys and St Thomas's FT, London Northwest University Healthcare NHS Trust, Mid Cheshire Hospitals FT, Northampton General Hospital NHS Trust. Nuffield Health, West Hertfordshire Hospitals NHS Trust, Wellbeing Sanctuary for Staff, and West Hertfordshire Hospitals NHS Trust again, Multi-Professional Preceptorship Programme. A popular category. Now, to announce the winner, please welcome our sponsor representative, Jennifer Gardner, Assistant Director at NHS Employers. I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Best Wellbeing and Staff Engagement Initiative category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges said our winner showed a great example of overcoming challenges and showing how NHS organisations can support their staff going forward. Judges felt this initiative is person-centred and the delivery of support to staff who were shielding or isolating at home was important and impressive. This was an inclusive health and wellbeing programme which kept staff 
at the very heart of their workforce. And the winner is... Great Western Hospital Foundation Trust. Congratulations. Thank you, Jennifer. And well done to Great Western Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust. Tell me, how does it feel to be our winner? The last eight months working through the pandemic has been a challenging time for everyone at the Great Western Hospital in Swindon. We're thrilled to have won this award, which has been a huge team effort from not only the health and wellbeing team, but also our charity Brighter Futures, volunteering team, human resources and occupational health. Being able to support our hardworking staff with a range of services from counselling and a listening ear to care packages full of goodies and treats help to make their days a little bit easier. We're so proud of everyone's efforts and dedicate this award to them all. We're one trust, one team. The next category is for the best use of technology to improve the working environment. This award is aimed at recognising an organisation that demonstrates the meaningful use fit of technology to improve the working environment, to give nurses and midwives more time to care. Back to you, Alan. Thanks, Steve. Those on the shortlist are Dorset Healthcare University FT, East Lancashire Hospitals NHS Trust, Nutricia, Royal Free London FT, and West Hertfordshire Hospitals NHS Trust. Here to announce our category winner is Rhoda Radulla, Magnet Programme Director at New York Presbyterian Will Cornell Medical Centre. I am absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the best use of technology to improve the working environment category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges said the winning entry was well designed and presented, demonstrating meaningful outcomes showing great effort to capture improvements and showed an innovative approach that listened to their workforce. Judges were impressed by this fantastic digital resource, which they said is informative, aligns with career progression, and felt it could be mapped across the UK. And the winner is Dorset Healthcare University FT. Congratulations. Thank you, Rhoda. Well done, Dorset Healthcare University NHS Foundation Trust. How does it feel to take the home the winning title? We're absolutely chuffed at winning this award and being recognised nationally for our contribution in helping to highlight the incredible talents and skills of our brilliant band Stu to Four. It's fantastic. <laughs> it is just. So we're dedicating um, this award to this amazing group of colleagues who are the backbone of Dorset Healthcare. Our staff and managers have told us that this resource has inspired our colleagues and it nurtures their talents and self-belief. We've given this work away to a raft of other trusts. So that's what we are. We now turn our attention to Best Employer for Staff Recognition. Staff who are recognised and rewarded are more motivated and engaged. This award is aimed at organisations that demonstrate a clear commitment to identifying dedicated and high-performing individuals in their workforce and ensuring their achievements are celebrated. Alan, who made the shortlist? Those on the shortlist are Bradford District Care FT. Dorset Healthcare University, FT, and Leeds Teaching Hospitals, NHS Trust. To reveal our fourth winner, I'm going to hand over to Helene Donnelly, Ambassador for Cultural Change at Midlands Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Best Employer for Staff Recognition category for the Nursing Times Summit and Awards. The judges felt that this was a truly innovative entry that addressed a problem area that hadn't been fully looked into before. Judges were impressed by how this entry nurtured the talent and self-belief of their workforce and provided real opportunity to further develop within their careers. The judges said that this could very easily be lifted and indeed could and should be implemented across the sector as it is so sustainable. Judges felt this was an excellent use of improvement methodology and aligns to the people plan. And the winner is Dorset Healthcare University Foundation Trust. Thank you, Helene. And once again, well done to Dorset Healthcare University FT, who are back again to provide an acceptance speech. 
We're absolutely chuffed at winning this award and being recognised nationally for our contribution in helping to highlight the incredible talents and skills of brilliant bands due to fall. It's fantastic. <laughs> it is just. So we're dedicating um, this award to this amazing group of colleagues who are the backbone of Dorset Healthcare. Our staff and managers have told us that this resource has inspired our colleagues and it nurtures their talents and self-belief. We've given this work away to a raft of other trusts as part of being one NHS, because after all, that's what we are. We now move on to our next category, Best Diversity and Inclusion Practice, which is sponsored by Health Education England. This important award aims to recognise an individual who has made a significant improvement and continued commitment to promoting diversity in the health and care workforce. Championing the recruitment and support of employees from minority ethnic backgrounds or supporting diversity in age, gender or sexual orientation and ensuring equal access to opportunities and progression. Alan, please reveal the finalists. The finalists are Rotherham, Doncaster and South Humber, FT. Somerset, FT. And the Royal Wolverhampton NHS Trust. Hello, my name is Liz Fenton and I'm the Deputy Chief Nurse at Health Education England. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Best Diversity and Inclusion Practice category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges felt that this entry had responded with action to some of the challenges internationally recruited nurses face. So often, international nurses are required to simulate and not integrate. So it was really heartening to see that the Trust had addressed these issues and to a level that could be measured. The judges felt they provided a good example of using compassionate and culturally sensitive approaches to address an organisational challenge and a particular area that is often overlooked. And the winner is the Royal Wolverhampton Trust. Congratulations. Well done to the Royal Wolverhampton. How does it feel to be our winner? Honoured to receive this award. As an organisation, we have always recognised the importance of diversity and inclusion practice. The team and I are extremely proud that our suite of programmes designed to meet the individual needs of our Bay and international nursing staff has been recognised. This has given the team a huge boost as we continue to build on this work. So thank you. The next category is for the best workplace for learning and development, over 1,500 nursing staff. This award recognises medium to large organisations that are prioritising learning and development opportunities, using the resources available to them to offer a wide-ranging portfolio of CPD options to its workforce. So, Alan, how many made the shortlist? We have six on the shortlist, Steve. They are Dorset Healthcare University FT. Leeds Teaching Hospitals, NHS Trust. Lincolnshire Partnership, FT. London Northwest University Healthcare, NHS Trust. Nuffield Health. And West Hertfordshire Hospitals, NHS Trust. To announce the winner from our panel of judges, please welcome Wendy Nicholson, MBE, Deputy Chief Nurse for Public Health England. I am absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the best workplace for learning and development over 1,500 nursing staff category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges were impressed with this entry because of its consideration for psychological support, which is sometimes forgotten. They said the entry achieved so much despite the many changes in the landscape and at a time of great loss. The team managed to support other learners and to share that learning across systems. An agile workplace is able to make quick changes to support colleagues and to prepare them for different and sometimes new roles. The use of restorative supervision, they said, was brilliant. And the winner is... London Northwest University Healthcare Trust. Thank you very much, Wendy, and well done to London Northwest University Healthcare NHS Trust. Over to you. 
thank you Nursing Times for this amazing award for the best workplace for learning and development. I want to thank my team as well for working so hard and maintaining a professional and dedicated team for working throughout COVID. COVID has been extremely hard on everybody, but it's ensuring that they provide the best training to support staff on frontline, which gives the best patient care. So thank you very much, Nursing Times. Next up is the award for the best workplace for learning and development with under 1,500 nursing staff. Like the previous category, this award aims to recognise employers that prioritise learning and development opportunities, using the resources available to them to offer a wide-ranging portfolio of continuing professional development options to its nursing and midwifery staff. However, here we focus on small to medium-sized organisations. Let's hear the shortlist, Alan. Those on the shortlist are Buckinghamshire Healthcare NHS Trust, Lambeth College, Mary Stokes UK and Northumbria University and Marie Curie Hospice Newcastle. To tell us who takes the top spot, please welcome Geraldine Walters, Director of Education and Standards for the Nursing and Midwifery Council. I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the best workplace for learning and development for under 1,500 nursing staff for the Nursing Times Workforce Submission Awards. The judges thought this was a great initiative identifying the requirements of staff and delivering a staff-centred approach to development which will aid recruitment and retention. The judges said the strength of the project was addressing the development needs of the workforce and sustaining the programmes for over four years. And our winner demonstrated a development project which focuses on key life skills. And the winner is... Lambeth College. Thank you, Geraldine, and well done to Lambeth College. How does it feel? Wow, thank you so much for this award. I'm really honoured to receive this award on behalf of Lambeth College and the partners that we work with to develop a meaningful CPD for clinical and non-clinical staff in the NHS. This award means a lot to us uh, because it gives us further motivation to develop the programme even further uh, for the students that we work with. I just want to say a special thank you to the partners I work with, in particular Don Brand and Desiree Cox. You are both amazing. And also to the teaching team and of course the students. Thank you so, so much for this. I'm really grateful and, and honored, as, as I said. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's take a short break from revealing our winner, shall we, Alan? Yes, it'll give me a few minutes to perfect my celebration selfie for the Twitter competition. Remind me, Steve, of the details. Simply post your best celebration selfie on Twitter. We now turn to the best international recruitment experience category sponsored by the Occupational English Test, OET. Overseas nurses strengthen our domestic workforce, bringing a wealth of experience and diversity and require significant personal and financial investment. This award aims to recognise an organisation's strategic approach to the improvement of overseas nurses and midwives' experience of recruitment to the UK. Please reveal our finalists, Alan. The finalists are as follows. Barking, Havering and Redbridge University Hospitals, NHS Trust. East Lancashire Hospitals, NHS Trust. Elysium Healthcare, Health Education England, Insignia Global Partners, Northwest Anglia FT, South Tyneside and Sunderland FT, and the Royal Wolverhampton NHS Trust. To announce our worthy winner, please welcome our sponsor representative, Mickey Bonin, Regional Head, EMA for OET. I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Best International Recruitment Experience category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges felt this entry demonstrated overall implementation of excellence in practice across the whole experience. Judges were impressed with the evidence of high satisfaction and retention rates and thought the winner showed a very individual approach, providing evidence of good attention to detail and good team approach for pre-arrival engagement. And the winner is... Barking, Havering and Redbridge University Hospitals Trust. Many congratulations. 
Thank you, Mickey, and well done to Barking, Havering and Redbridge University Hospitals NHS Trust. Here to accept the award is recruitment nurse, Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Hello. International Recruitment Experience Award. All we wanted to do was make our international nurses feel welcome and supported in this huge life-changing experience for them. We're thrilled to have so many new international nurses working at our trust. Our next award recognises Preceptorship of the Year over 1,500 nursing staff. This award recognises a medium to large size employer's preceptorship program for newly qualified nurses and or midwives. If it demonstrates support, development, coaching and mentorship as they move through the first year of employment and beyond. Let's find out the finalists. Five made the shortlist this year, Steve, and they are East Lancashire Hospitals NHS Trust. London Northwest University Healthcare NHS Trust. Nuffield Health. Southern Health and Social Care Trust and University College London Hospitals FT. Which one will take the trophy home today? To tell us, please welcome Arlene Wellman, Chief Nurse and Director of Infection Prevention and Control at Epsom and St. Helier University Hospitals and HS Trust. I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Preceptorship of the Year, over 1,500 nursing staff category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges said the processes that have been put into place for newly qualified practitioners should be commended, not only for developing an accredited program, but showing that they are working to develop staff and build a support network, enabling them to become more confident practitioners. Judges felt this entry was particularly strong in that the organization recruits nurses in sectors which traditionally have been low recruitment and low retention updates, uptakes. Judges said our winner had a sound program with some innovative elements which demonstrates more thought and a more sophisticated approach. And the winner is Nuffield Health. Thank you, Arlene, and well done to Nuffield Health. I'll now hand over to Chris Davis to accept this award on behalf of Nuffield. Chris, how does it feel to be our winner? Wow, thank you so much for this award. It's a real honour and a real privilege to uh, receive the award of Preceptorship of the Year. At Nuffield Health, we completely appreciate how difficult and challenging the first few months of a newly qualified nurse's career is and how it can be um, fraught with anxiety and concern and, and worry. What we really hope is that our programme um, boosts confidence, boosts self-efficacy and can really allow our nurses to achieve their full potential in this time. Um, so it's a real honour and a real privilege to be recognised for this award. just want to say thank you so much to all of the many people who contribute to the ongoing success of the programme. Thank you very much. Our next category celebrates the preceptorship of the year, but for under 1,500 nursing staff. Again, like the previous category, this award recognises preceptorship programmes demonstrating support, development, coaching and mentorship of new staff. This time, we are looking at small to medium-sized employers' support for newly qualified nurses and midwives as they move through the first year of employment and beyond. Alan, who are the contenders? The shortlist is as follows. Mary Stokes UK. Medway FT. St. Helens and Knowsley Teaching Hospitals NHS Trust. And West Hertfordshire Hospitals NHS Trust. To announce our winner, please welcome Ethel Changa, Southeast Regional Lead for the Chief Nursing Officer's Strategic Advisory Group. Well, let's hear what the judges had to say. Well, firstly, they were impressed by this being a multidisciplinary preceptorship program. They thought it was an innovative initiative that showed good collaboration. They said it made perfect sense and wondered why this hadn't been done before. 
The judges said it was an inclusive program that provided better services, and they were impressed by the changes implemented due to the pandemic. They were impressed by the fact that they talked the talk and put their money where their mouth is. I am pleased to announce that the winner is. West Hertfordshire Hospitals Trust. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Ethel, and well done to West Hertfordshire Hospitals NHS Trust, who are on the line to accept this award. I just want to say a massive thank you to the Nurse and Times Workforce Awards for um, giving us the opportunity to win Best Perceptionship of the Year for our multi-professional perceptionship programme at West Hearts. It's been a true labour of love by myself, Davinia and Deirdre, and this is for all of our newly registered staff that we've been supporting over the last three years who have just been utterly incredible. Our next category celebrates the Nursing Recruitment Marketing Campaign of the Year. A new category for 2020, this award recognises an organisation's marketing efforts to support nursing recruitment. Uh, judges were looking for originality and innovation that stands out from the others in the sector. Let's hear the shortlist, Alan. On the shortlist are St George's University Hospitals, FT, and the Mid-Yorkshire Hospitals, NHS Trust. Here to reveal the winner from our judging panel is Warrant Officer, First Class, Naval Nurse Elaine C. Grist, Specialist Medical Recruitment for the Royal Naval Reserves. I am absolutely thrilled to announce this year's winner of the Nursing Recruitment Marketing Campaign of the Year category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges felt our winner showed a great example of flexible, cost-effective an innovative marketing campaign which puts nurses at the centre of recruitment marketing. Judges described this project as excellent and were impressed by the focus on new starts and needs and experiences. And the winner is... St George's University Hospitals Foundation Trust. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Elaine, and well done to St George's University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust, of whom I'll hand over to accept this award. We're really proud to have won this award on behalf of St George's. Our recruitment marketing campaigns are a real effort across our organisation. We'd like to say a real big thank you to everybody that has made this happen, recruitment team colleagues, colleagues from our communications department, and all of the nursing and corporate nursing colleagues across the Trust who have come together to make this possible. To be recognised by the Nursing Times um, is a great accolade for the Trust and we are delighted to have won this award today. I would like to say a massive thank you to all the nurses that have taken part in our recent campaigns, both digital and our open days, and um, I'd like to say a great big thank you as well to all of them that have started with us as well. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Thank you. Our next category is the Healthcare NHS Trust. Joselito Marinas, Liverpool University Hospitals FT. Marina Michael, Barts Health NHS Trust. Adafalaki Olatunde, Sanctuary Care. Wilfredo Rodriguez Manuel, North Bristol NHS Trust. And Bongi Sibanda, Epsom and Hellier University Hospitals NHS Trust. To reveal the winner, please welcome Paul Leiburn. Nurse advisor to the Welsh Government. I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Overseas Nurse of the Year category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges felt our winner had made a significant impact in their organisation in their time in the UK and were impressed with how much this nurse had achieved within such a short period of time. Judges praised how the candidate provided support to overseas colleagues in practical and emotional ways which helped the colleagues transition into the organisation. Judges felt our winner was a role model to all overseas nurses and was a highly talented individual with a bright future ahead. And the winner is Adafalaki Olatunde from Sanctuary Care. 
Thank you, Paul, and well done to Ada Falaki Olatunde. How does it feel to be our winner? Thank you so much for this prestigious award. I feel so honored and grateful. It means so much to me, my family, and the entire care team at Sanctuary Care to be announced the winner of the Overseas Nurse of the Year. I believe winning this award will make for good career progression and opportunity in the nursing field, as well as encourage all the overseas nurses to be better versions of themselves wherever they are, and also to overcome any barrier despite the pandemic. Thank you. Three categories left to go now. Next up is Nurse Manager of the Year. This award aims to celebrate an exceptional team leader working in the NHS or independent sector who demonstrates commitment to nurturing and supporting their staff and have the biggest impact on staff health and well-being and fostering teams that feel valued as part of their organisation. Who made the shortlist, Alan? We have six very deserving nominees, and they are Amy Evans, the Royal Bournemouth and Christchurch Hospitals, F. Hopkins, Sheffield Teaching Hospitals, FT. Amanda Hughes, Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board. Belinda Loftus, Spectrum Community Health, CIC. Emma Newlove, Spectrum Community Health, CIC. And Andrew Rowat, Liverpool University Hospitals, FT. Thanks very much, Alan. Now, to reveal our winner, please welcome Dr. Crystal Oldman, CBE, Chief Executive of the Queen's Nursing Institute. I'm absolutely delighted to be announcing this year's winner of the Nurse Manager of the Year category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges said that this entrant demonstrates leadership with clear outcomes. They said they were thrilled to read of a manager who supports the development of her staff despite not interacting with all of them on a daily basis. A true leader who empowers her teams and helps her colleagues achieve great things. And the winner is Amanda Hughes, Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board. Congratulations, Amanda. Thank you, Crystal, and well done to Amanda Hughes. Tell us, how does it feel to be our winner? I'm extremely proud, honoured and grateful to have won this award. I would like to thank my managers in Betty Catalada University Health Board for nominating me, my team for their hard work and dedication, and to my family for their constant support. Our next and penultimate award is a big one. It recognises the Workforce Team of the Year. This category celebrates the HR or workforce team that has delivered significant improvements to recruitment, retention, training and development for all nursing and midwifery staff. Such teams are fundamental to ensuring the workforce planning of healthcare organisations with a focus mainly on hospitals or in the community. Alan, who are the finalists? Steve, we have 11, 11 fantastic hard-working teams in the running, and they are Bradford District Care FT, Bradford Teaching Hospitals FT, Buckinghamshire Healthcare NHS Trust, Calderdale and Huddersfield FT, Liverpool University Hospitals FST. Sheffield Teaching Hospitals, FT, for creating a blended ward team to deliver truly patient-centred care. Sheffield Teaching Hospitals, FT. A very popular category. To present the award, please welcome Sam Foster, Chief Nursing Officer at Oxford University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. I am absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner of the Workforce Team of the Year category for the Nursing Times and Workforce Summit Awards. The judges felt that this entry recognised the honest and transparent approach that they took to address the challenges that they faced. Judges felt our winner really took on the task of addressing the challenges for the common goal of patient safety and experience. Judges also said it's significant what they did. It clearly paid off with their ability to handle the pandemic. And the winner is Medway Foundation Trust. Many congratulations. Thank you, Sam, and well done to Medway NHS Foundation Trust, who are on the line. Tell us, how much does this award mean to you? So thank you, this is a great achievement for our team. This has been five years of development of staff, so they can improve themselves, develop themselves, and most importantly, improve patient outcomes. So thank you very much. Thank you. 
And last, but definitely not least, our final award today is for the best UK employer of the year for nursing staff. This award celebrates the HR or workforce team that has delivered significant improvements to recruitment, retention, training and development opportunities for all nursing and midwifery staff. Such teams are fundamental to ensuring the workforce planning of the healthcare organisation, whether focused mainly on hospitals or in the community. Alan, for the last time, please reveal our shortlist. Steve, those in the running are NHS Blood and Transplant and the Royal Wolverhampton NHS Trust. To announce our final winner, please welcome Sue Tranker, Deputy CNO for NHS England and NHS Improvement. I am absolutely thrilled to be announcing this year's winner, the best UK Employer of the Year for Nursing Staff category for the Nursing Times Workforce Summit and Awards. The judges said this was an impressive entry, which takes an approach to favouring long-term achievements. To have a waiting list for people to join an organisation is impressive, but to have a qualitative and quantitative approach that considers all specialties is even more impressive. Our winner demonstrates successful outcomes in terms of recruitment and retention and has brilliant examples of supporting professional development. The organisation has a track record of success and is a leading light for other providers across the country. And the winner is the Royal Wolverhampton Trust. Thank you, Sue, and well done to the Royal Wolverhampton for the second time. How does it feel? We feel privileged and humbled to be awarded such an important award. To be recognised as the best UK employer for nursing is amazing. And it's thanks to all of the brilliant nursing staff here at the Trust. We're delighted. Thank you so much. So... There we go. The winners of the 2020 Nursing Times Workforce Awards have now been revealed. Congratulations to Royal Wolverhampton and to all of our winners, and well done also to everyone that made the shortlist, especially during such a challenging year. Thank you also to everyone who is watching wherever you are. And thanks again to everybody involved, our entrants, judges, sponsors, and of course, winners. I would love to see you all at the 2021 Nursing Times Workforce Awards, hopefully in different circumstances. Look out for details next year on how to enter. Meanwhile, the Nursing Times Workforce Summit is continuing tomorrow afternoon, so I hope that some of you will be joining me for that. But for now, thank you and goodbye.